It's lovely to be here, um, and I've, I've really learned such a lot. This is a trial, okay? This is not a product, but I'm just telling you about um, what we're up to um, in, in, in my group in London. Um, Embody is the spin-out from my lab, which is running this project. So I just really want to talk, first of all, about the project itself. Um, we're a group I mentioned yesterday. I particularly single out Susanna Clark, Jonathan Jeffers, and Rob Bosencroft at the top left of there, and Catherine van der Straten in the second row um, towards the right-hand side, as people have really put a lot of work into this project. Ten years ago, things were going really well with resurfacing in um, men, so we could, we could really show an amazing um, restoration of normal function in hip resurfacing that you just couldn't deliver in hip replacement, however good they were. They weren't the same as normal people. However, in a female hip, that uh, the hip resurfacing was a good example of technology designed by men for men. It really wasn't a device that could work in a female-shaped hip like this. And of course, we all know the metal-on-metal -metal, um, debacle that followed. So we actually wrote, a, um, we described the contoured edges of the acetabulum and the femoral head um, um, and suppressed a PhD of Wild well Dantachily for a long time because of that um, 10 years ago. And it's taken this long to get, get here today. We've been using, I've been personally using Delta Ceramic for um, more than 10 years, so that didn't seem like an experiment. And Medico, to the company that's uh, plasma spraying the Delta, and again, I've been using um, plasma spray titanium and HA coating from that company personally since 1991. So this didn't seem like either of these were a big experiment. Um, we've in every single device is integrity tested, but we did lots of destructive testing, lots of wear testing. Um, actually, um, Camilla, um, yeah, uh, one, another of the engineers in our group, um, loaded up the femoral head onto the edge of the acetabulum, trying to try to cause some noise. We did. She did manage to scrape um, the surface of the femoral head, but we haven't managed to make any squeaks. So lots and lots of testing, as you can imagine. The contour itself um, comes, as I say, from a description um, from Weil's thesis on, of the um, contour of the, of, of the acetabulum, just flipping it to make it symmetric, so you give up you, you, the fovea. Um, interestingly, the actual coverage of this is significantly more than you get from a, uh, a conventional hip resurfacing. So you see we have that recess both for the extension but also for flexion that you, you, you can't have and with the same coverage angle with a conventional hard-on-hard -hard, um, resurfacing. Um, and the range of motion, because of those cutouts, you get a very good range of motion from the machinery alone. Um, it seems like that is a slightly better thing if you like a big range of motion. On the femoral head, we've published um, the, the contour of the femoral head before, and making that uh, anatomic contour into a product with a flexion and extension facet, and then a cutaway for psoas medially. Um, that, that's been an interesting uh, development. It's quite hard to make both of these contours for, for Ceramtech. Um, cementless, I mean, most people here seem very happy, I seem very happy with cementless fixation, so to go cemented seemed like that would be a backward step. And so the, the plasma stray directly onto ceramic, that's a novel thing, no one's done that before, um, and it works, and we, we, could, we do shear, fatigue, shear testing and pull-off testing to show that that seems to be as strong as plasma stray titanium onto cobalt chrome, for instance, but obviously it's, it's, it's a, a technical risk. Because we're just a very small group in a lab, um, Rob uh, designed, and we have 3D printers running every day doing PSI, we actually made single-use disposable um, nylon instruments um, because it's cheaper than, than, than other ones, and lots of sizes, as you'd expect. Um, we also, for 20 years, have been doing CT-based planning for everyone. So here's actually the very first case um, delivered as a custom. He's a 37-year-old man, very happy with his BHR, um, but he's got an inflammatory arthritis, and so planning this, this case pretty much 
can be automated. The planning here, you're just putting the acetabulum and the femur exactly where you want it and achieve that. That's easy. Um, this is a more difficult one. Planning is really interesting, you know. If it, planning in 3D allows you to see what you can achieve and how much under coverage you're going to have, it's a real luxury um, to allow you to make choices and, and make those choices with your patients. I really recommend it as, as an enjoyable thing to do. Um, I'd like to talk about assistive technologies. Um, Kartik, um, who's here, maybe next time we'll talk about um, augmented reality and so on. It's a really interesting way of training people, I think. But here's the study design. This is Catherine van der Straten's um, uh, work. Um, all we're trying to prove is it's not inferior to metal hip resurfacing. So we're doing a 20 patient safety study and then another 230 patients in the efficacy cohort. And the outcome measures are, um, as you'd expect, uh, um, patient reported outcome measures, um, boning growth, migration from CTRSA, and metal ions in the safety study. The operating technique, uh, there's no big surprises here. Here's um, Klaus Peter watching Nobuhito Sagano um, preparing. It's, it's much the same as the hip resurfacing. Nothing very um, complicated or difficult there, I don't think. Um, the difference is there's a very, very small set of instruments. So the theatre staff love it because not only is it a small set of instruments, but they throw everything away at the end. So it's um, easy. Um, and the operation the, so far um, seems to be going very nicely. Um, the acetabular components go in, the femoral heads go on. Um, we've only done 16 cases, so it's very, very, very early. And of course, it's an experiment, it's a trial. This is no sort of product. We've got several different outcome measures. We're all used to seeing patient-reported outcomes. This is actually case number one. This is her own... Um, journey. Um, she's now really very good. She's um, a very keen dancer and she's dancing again, feeling happy. This is case number two who tweets. So he, everybody in the world knows his name. If you're interested, you can look him on Twitter. Smashed my, this is him tweeting, I'm not encouraging this. Smashed my personal best on elliptical cross trainer over weekend without even trying. So if things go badly, everyone in the world is going to know because patients are telling everybody what's going on in social media. So there's nothing hidden here. This is case number five, putting her knee up onto her shoulder. I'm not encouraging her to do it. There's a video which I have suppressed because it's upsetting to see people doing that very soon after surgery. Um, this is actually a BHR. We're going to do gate data like this at 12 months. Seven kilometers an hour is quite brisk walking. And Actually, short stems are better than long stems, but resurfacing are even better than that. And we're going to be, I'm looking forward to, to the gate data um, as it comes. X-rays, um, I'll just show you those three cases I showed you. This is that first case, nasty femoral head. This woman's in her 60s. Her mother had a periprosthetic fracture of the femur um, following total hip replacement. She did not want a total hip replacement. She's doing wonderfully. Um, this is the cross-training crazy man triathlete. Um, and this is that dancing um, woman. Um, so those seem to be going okay. Um, we're also doing CT with a very low dose. At six months post-op, we're using 1.5 millisieverts, and of course, that will let us look inside. Um, this is obviously a cadaver, as you can see, but at six months post-op, we're gonna be doing this on the patients to see what's happening to the bone inside, so that'll be really interesting. But at six weeks, uh, post-op, six weeks and three months, we're doing very low dose for the CTRSA, and that's also, um, a, a, an interesting part of the project. So, so lots of data points that are, are going to come out and it, it's very strictly regulated as you can imagine. So um, the other thing I suppose is, is when is it going to be available and the answer to that is in a very, very, very long time. There's no question of this being rapidly rolled out at all. Um, we started this really full time in 2013. Our first in human um, was in September. Um, and it looks realistically as though it may be ready for general release in the United States in 2026. Thanks very much for your attention. <laughs>